simple properties the Internet Management Framework should exhibit. Ubiquity, simplicity, extensibility and robustness. Although these properties sound somehow trivial, they would have a profound impact on the decisions made during the design process. We'll conclude with a small fragment of an interview I had with Bert Weinen, one of the core IETF developers, where we discuss the decision to run SNMP over UDP. We'll now discuss the goals the SNMP designers had in mind. In fact, these goals were already written down in the very first version of the SNMP standard, although at that time in slightly different words. The first goal is ubiquity, which basically means that it should be possible to run SNMP on every system. In the early 1990s, people were thinking at small PCs, but also at large servers. Nowadays, the PCs have much more processing power than the PCs in the early 1990s. Still, SNMP is able to run on very small devices, such as microcontrollers and embedded systems. The second goal the SNMP designers had in mind is that it should be relatively easy to include SNMP software in systems. What does this mean? Well, this means that the code should be very small. However, this only applies for the systems that are being managed, so the agent systems. Since we still need a lot of functionality, the consequence is that the code in the manager should be quite complex. So basically the decision is to make manager software complex, but agent software very simple. Another consequence of the fact that SNP is simple is that agents have limited functionality. For example, an agent is not able to check its own behavior. Therefore, if something goes wrong, it cannot, in an autonomic fashion, inform the manager of problems. This is quite different from OSI management, where agents had far more functionality. In the case of OSI management, it was possible that an agent autonomically informed the manager in case something went wrong. With SNMP, this is not possible. As a consequence, managers should continuously monitor their systems. It should be noted, however, that this was the case with SNMP version 1. If you look at newer versions of the SNMP standards, you see that some very limited functionality was included, such that agents can inform the managers if something goes wrong. Still, the main idea that managers should frequently monitor their systems is still true these days. The third goal the SNMP designers had in mind is that it should be relatively easy to extend management functionality. For that reason, they have defined management information in the former's modules. In fact, it is relatively easy to add a new module to a system. This can even be done on the fly. How that should be done is defined in a standard called extensible agents. The final goal the SNMP designers had in mind is that management should be robust. This means that network management should still function if the network is, between quotes, on fire. So even in situations where many things go wrong, the network manager should still have control of the network. For that reason, the designers of SNMP decided to run SNMP over the connectionless transport protocol, UDP. In fact, the idea was if something goes wrong in the network, so for example, if many packets get lost, you can simply send the same management command many times. At least one of these commands will then arrive at the agent system, so the management activity that is requested can be done. Assume that we would use TCP, then we would have to use TCP connections and setting up such connections may already be impossible if many packets get lost. From this we can more or less conclude that one of the important initial goals of SNMP was fault management. It's clear that SNMP was not designed primarily with accounting management in mind, because if you do accounting management, it is not acceptable that you lose management information. 
If you lose management information, then the bills that you create may not be correct and customers of course will not accept it. If we look at how SNAP is currently being used, it's interesting to note that it is primarily used for monitoring. The requirement that management should be robust and still work if the network is on fire led to the decision to not rely on any protocols. So SNMP is defined to run only on top of IP and UDP. It does not, for example, use the secure transport protocol or IPsec, even though SNMP requires some form of security. Also other protocols like the network time protocol are not being used by SNMP. If we look back, the decision to use UDP may not have been the best decision. It would have been better to also allow the use of TCP. TCP could have been the primary choice or alternatively as an option. If you look at the IRTF, Network Management Research Group, we see that proposals have been made there to use also TCP as underlying protocol. However, these proposals were not taken over by the IETF. Also, the fact that SNMP is independent of other protocols is not the best choice. If you look at the IETF at this moment, you see that the use of other protocols, like for example SSH, is currently being investigated and standardized in conjunction with SNMP.